morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead's Micro Moment Monday, where we talk about tips and tricks, and today we have a pretty good tip, I think. Uh, first off, I just want, I know that some of you will not have um, seen the other two videos where I announced the reason for this Band-Aid on my head. So those of you that already know, just forgive me for a second so that I can um, put a stop to any concern that people might have. I had a little thing removed on my forehead. I have some stitches. Stitches will be coming out on the very day that this video is released. So it's absolutely nothing to worry about. So we're going to just go ahead. So I'm really excited to announce our Black Friday sale. This is Thanksgiving week. And so on Friday morning at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, everything in our bookstore is going on sale for 25% off everything, including the two canning classes. And we have never had a 25% off sale. So this is your opportunity to pick up the books or the classes that you have wanted. It will end Saturday morning at 8 a.m. So it's actually 24 hours, well, 24 hours and one minute uh, sale. And so I will be sending out a community announcement early on Friday morning to remind you as well. The next thing that we're going to cover is, Jim and I are pretty excited about this tip. We think it's pretty darn great. We started talking about future videos last night and Jim said, well, what about barbecue sauce? And so I looked up some recipes and oh my gosh, it calls for 25 pounds of fresh tomatoes. Well, we're not producing tomatoes anymore. Maybe some of you are in different parts of the country and tomatoes in the grocery store are, whew, Boy, are they expensive. And so I calculated the cost and it was just exorbitant. And so I went to one of my favorite trusted websites, which is healthycanning.com. And if you're not yet familiar with that, I, I'm going to put the address right here, the URL, healthycanning.com. I trust them. They follow the USDA except for one little thing I'm going to talk about in just a minute, and you can read their paragraph on, on what their justification is. And I looked there for, an, um, an, for a recipe on barbecue sauce, and they introduced me to something that I didn't know about, and it's called Passata, P-A-S-S-A-T-A. -S -S and when I looked into it a little bit, what I discovered was it is an Italian tomato product, and it is made by taking fresh tomatoes, the uh, sauce tomatoes of uh, Marzano and Roma tomatoes, running them through a food mill to uh, remove the skins and the seeds, and then what is left is a tomato puree, and that tomato puree is passata. And then I started shopping for Posada, and there's not a whole lot of that available where we live. I would have to order it, and there would be a lot of shipping charges. So I also found out on the Healthy Canning website that tomato puree is pretty much the same thing as the Posada. So I began looking at their recipe, and here's what they said, and I was so excited. What they said was, and this is their one little deviation from what the USDA recommends in terms of all recipes that call to start with fresh tomatoes. What they said was, since 1988, USDA has told all of us that regardless of whether we're going to water bath can or pressure can, tomatoes, all tomato products need to be acidified so that they fall below 4.6 pH into the safe acid zone so that they can be water bath canned. And even with pressure canning, we also still have to acidify. So tomatoes, regardless, need to be acidified. Well, what they said was that the USDA doesn't really want us to use canned tomato products in place of the 25 pounds of fresh tomatoes because of the differences that might be present across brands in the pH. But they reasoned that since 1988, we've had to acidify tomatoes. And since the recipe that I was looking at called for a lot of vinegar, they said they were taking this one little deviation and were starting with tomato puree instead of the fresh tomatoes. And it is far less expensive, for instance, I ran the math, I've, I've looked and figured out a whole lot of things about this, and I now have a conversion algorithm that I am using when something calls for fresh tomatoes, how I can instead use this right here. 
This is Cento uh, tomato puree. And I prefer Cento brand or even Contadina brand to most other brands because they don't start from concentrate. They do fresh tomatoes the very same way that Posada is made. And so, boy, is this stuff hard to find. Jim was gone four hours today, running all around to our various stores, clear in town, which is 40 miles away. And how many stores did you go to, Jim? Four or five, but it was closer to five hours. Oh, my gosh. Just to find this product. And so it's not readily available where you live. But it is an amazing shortcut, just a fantastic shortcut. So I calculated the price, today's price for fresh tomatoes, for that recipe that called for 25 pounds of fresh tomatoes. That would have been $60. $60 worth of tomatoes. And I would have ended up with not very many pints of uh, barbecue sauce. I think it was seven pints of barbecue sauce. Well, for that price, thank you very much. I'll just buy it ready-made in the store. But then if I use the Posada or this puree, it's only $21 for the same amount. So that is a whole lot reasonable. It is less than half the price of fresh tomatoes. So one of these cans is the same as three and a half pounds of fresh tomatoes. So it, this holds at today's prices $8.75 worth of tomatoes. And this can was $3.50. In your area, these might be less expensive. And I know that you can get other brands of tomato puree for under $2 a can. But most of that is from concentrate, and who knows what is in that. So the thing I love about Cento, and also with Contadina, I, I like Cento a little bit more, is the list of ingredients. There is one thing. Ingredients, tomato puree, period. No salt. No preservative, nothing. It is just tomato puree. So this is like having a can of three and a half pounds of tomatoes that are already cooked, peeled, seeded, and cooked down to where it is ready to go in various recipes. Whoa, what a shortcut this is. And so I went through our books and to the list of things that I could possibly can using this puree instead of fresh tomatoes. Ketchup, barbecue sauce, cocktail sauce, seafood cocktail sauce, tomato soup, tomato sauce, tomato sauce and tomato puree are not the same thing. Tomato juice and pizza sauce. So I have the option now of being able to use puree at less than half the cost of fresh tomatoes and a whole heck of a lot less work because I don't have to chop the tomatoes and run them through the food mill to get rid of the skins and the seeds. That's already done and in a can. Now, right now, and I just checked another recipe a few minutes ago, it is probably more economical to buy ready-made barbecue sauce if you can stand it, if you like that. But for me, I want to have the option of having this base ingredient on our food storage shelves so that it gives me plenty of options that I can do myself and I don't have to count on having fresh tomatoes be available because we may reach that point when either our own gardens aren't producing or it's out of season or they're not available in the grocery stores. So this is like a insurance policy that I have enough tomato base that I can do a whole heck of a lot of things. Now this puree would not be good for salsa. It wouldn't be good for chili or for soups where you want the chunky parts of the tomato. But anything that requires a smooth, consistent base, um, a, a puree base, this tomato puree is just fantastic. So in the coming weeks, I'm going to be doing some videos on some of the things that we can do with this. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because it will save a lot of money over the cost of fresh tomatoes. Plus it will give me some experience that I've not yet had before in doing a wider variety of tomato things that I've not been able to do because we have a terrible time trying to get very many tomatoes to grow where we are. So that's it. 
I hope you love this tip as much as we are. We're just excited. We keep thinking of things. Oh, maybe we could use it for this or maybe we could use it for that. And, um, and I very much appreciate the fact that Healthy Canning has made that statement about this slight little deviation from the USDA that they feel is safe because of the acidification that we all have to do. When I use this, when I open the can, I'm going to take the pH. I'm not going to open a can today, but we will on our first video where we are showing how to use this. I'll take the pH using our testing strips, and then I will also take the pH of the finished product to ensure that it is below 4.6. So thanks for being with us. Have a wonderful holiday this coming week, and we will see you next week for another, oh, one more announcement. Because this is Thanksgiving week, our Wednesday video is going to come out on Tuesday. And that way you won't be bothered with one of our videos when you're so busy getting ready for your holiday dinner. So thank you so much for being with us and we'll see you again next week for another Micro Moment.